next question comment comes from XP50 player, and this is in response to the Armtech T1 only T1 to use PCM video I did. Oh, I haven't written when I did that one. Did I write it on that one? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, I think I did it. I think I recorded this video in January 2022, if I'm brutally honest, but possibly not. Um, XP50 player writes, I just wanted to mention now how rare Canon frontal lobe and PCM channel add-on for the M&T series, which is similar added 500k of volatile memory for samples, but via the PCM card slot and also offered floppy disk storage for samples and sequences and songs for the diskless M1. Now, what is really interesting about this is that this was actually quite a good solution um, for the M1 uh, back in the day. If you were prolific with your sounds and samples and needed to load things in, having a disc player was really, really great. Um, the problem is these things are absolutely rare as hen's teeth. Um, it's a good call out and I've been looking for one of these devices for, for quite a few years. I'm not sure how many were actually sold. Um, eight hundred dollars was the price for one of these back in nineteen eighty eight um, which was a chunk of cash on top of an m one or a t one at the at point in time if you think about a t one was what, what three thousand plus dollars plus another eight hundred pound uh, eight hundred dollars for this this particular device i I really like the idea of one of these devices pushing them off the disc it, it actually has so many uh labor saving um ideas to it being able to do that. Um, and you know, if you can't have stable cards, the $800 price tag actually starts to look fairly reasonable. If you think that at that point in time, these cards, the memory cards, I can't remember what they were brand new, but you wouldn't have got much change out of a hundred dollars brand new for a memory card. So $800 is eight memory cards and you could get considerably more than eight memory cards worth on a set of discs and, and discs were 10, 10 bucks a piece. So, you know, you kind of had to work it out on that sort of basis. In the initial thing, it was, oh, that's expensive. But after you actually work through the maths, you go, actually, you know what? It's not as expensive as it may may have seemed. Um, but as I say, they are as rare as hen's teeth. I, I've not seen one of these come up in the market space ever, I don't think. It doesn't mean they don't exist. I just have never seen one come up. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. The next mailbag item comes from Arcom9800. And this is in response to the Revenge of the Clone videos I did uh, way back at the beginning of 2022. Uh, in fact, this one was January. Um, and uh, Arcom writes, Hi John, one of the first things I did when I bought my receptor VIP from Muse was to do a complete system backup to an external portable uh, SSD drive using the system backup function in the VIPs menu. I imagine you're fully aware of this option. I'm wondering, will it serve your needs for this project? Best, Rob. So I have to sort of um, <laughs> say, thanks, Rob. Um, the backup function, unfortunately, was introduced uh, in version two, or maybe version 2.1 of the receptor operating system. Uh, and the problem with that is that anyone who has uh, an operating system below this uh, will need to clone the hard drive for protection because this feature won't be available. Now, the two Muse receptors that I own are both uh, Receptor 1 Rev Cs, uh, which is the operating system, or the highest operating system you can install on those is version 1.7, which obviously is lower than version two. So it's back to cloning we go. But thanks for calling out this function. You're not the only one who's called out the fun the, the backup function that existed in later versions of the OS. Um, but unfortunately it wasn't in this, ver my, the version of the OS that um, 
uh, that I've got on uh, my receptors. Bit of a pain, I know, but that's reality. Um, anyway, as an FYI at this point, I should say that um, for calling out the functionality, um, but if anybody is really interested, the receptor uh, operates on the Red Hat Linux flavor. And the reason I say that is because if you're looking for tools to deal with issues with the base installation, it's the Red Hat Linux tools is kind of where you need to head. And you can get some tools that help you out. I'm not gonna say what they are because um, as I go through videos, you might, I'll sort of introduce you to the various tools that I've, I've been, been working with. Um, I don't want to say anything that's that's kind of not something I've done a video about, otherwise um, you're probably thinking, how the hell do I do this? So um, that's uh, kind of where we are. Anyway, Rob then wrote back to me um, and said, uh, thanks for the reply. Sorry you're restricted to a workaround, but uh, as with all your videos, I look forward to the reception cloning, pro uh, cloning project episodes. And such a pity Muse have left us all high and dry. Yes, and I think that is um, one of the biggest problems um, with uh, where Muse was. Uh, I've said many times on the channel that I have always thought that the Muse receptor was a great idea. I think the Sea Lake audio system is a great idea and there's another one and there's a newer one and I can't think what it's called now, but somebody will pull me up on it. Um, and I think that's a great idea. I think these these kind of products are you know of, of kind of band in your box style products especially for gigging musicians and i know you know several musicians several big musicians while on tour were using uh, receptors you know two receptors to to provide a lot of the the virtual synths rather than carrying the synths with them now you know i'm not really a, a virtual synth man but i do think the vsts are great um but in response to the specific videos, at this point in time, a lot of the parts had arrived and I hadn't actually got round to, to filming the the further episodes, which actually did happen after this. Um, but there was a lot of progress that was made. It took a lot of lateral thinking, I think is the way. Somebody who probably knows Linux would probably say, oh, well, that was bleeding obvious, John, but I'm not, an, you know, I'm not a Linux coder. I'm not a Linux aficionado. And uh, Unix and Linux, you know, is um, you know something where you do actually have to know your syntax and you do have to understand what you what you're typing when you type in it. Because if you have a backspace, a backspace, or a slash, or a hyphen, or something in the wrong place, it can make it do all kinds of weird and wonderful things that you didn't want it to do. Um, so there were a number of parts for Revenge of the Clone. Um, they're all if you go to the channel and you type in the word Muse above my channel or you look for the playlist which is Muse Receptor you will find all the videos that were done on the Receptor or have been done so far on the Receptor. There is more to come I will be spending time uh, with my two Receptors. One Receptor is kind of a vanilla Receptor and the other Receptor is loaded fully up with contact um, so I think there's lots of things to do. I, I've always been really quite impressed with the sound that comes off the Receptor um, the fact that you can also root off the receptor as well, that's that's pretty brilliant. Um, and, it, and it, you know, just, just a word for the wise here. Um, if you're using it with something like a, a Kronos workstation, the, the power is utterly astonishing. I'll leave it at that.